So, here's a question for you. Does God have a penis? Yeah, does God have a penis? Now, bear with me because I went a long way through, through the woods to come up with this question and uh, that was just a question that came up. It all started, I guess, a couple days ago. I'm in, the, uh, I'm in the break room at work and, you know, there's the TV at the break room at work that nobody pays attention to because we're all up here on our cell phones, right? And what do I see at the bottom of the crawl? But breaking news! Bill O'Reilly fired by Fox News. So great, you know, the news is in the news again. That makes sense. That's wonderful. But it also kind of makes me realize this is a really bad week for right-wing talking point hucksters, is it not? So first, before that, Alex Jones of InfoWars basically comes out through his attorney and says that all of his catalog of information is complete bunk. It's all just a bunch of stuff that he's been putting out there, stories that he's been cooking up, just to turn a buck, all right? <laughs> Which I think we all knew from the get-go. And if I could, just take a second here to recognize InfoWars for being the most perfect case of truth in advertising. Because let's face it, they're really not info, but it's definitely a war on info, is it not? But I digress. So basically, Alex Jones is admitting that all of the shite that he's been putting out for years is complete rubbish. So if you have been somebody in his audience who has been maybe m making life decisions based off of things that he's been saying, I don't know, decisions like how much aluminum foil to buy for hatware and how much of your monthly budget should go into said aluminum foil, or how much duct tape that you need to purchase to line your windows because of chemtrails, or maybe which pizza joint to just go into storming and brandishing an AR-15 because you're going to save the children, or of course, who to vote for for President of the United States. Any of these life decisions that you have made, based on Alex Jones, he's now admitting you've been basing your life decisions on performance art. I don't know that I've ever made a life decision based on, I don't know, maybe a mime that I saw at a street fair or something like that. But that's basically what y'all have been doing. Now, don't get me wrong, I know it sounds like I'm getting ready to go off on some sort of liberal elitist rant where, you know, oh, liberals are smart and conservatives are dumb, and I really don't want to do that. For multiple reasons. One of which, I am no elitist. Trust me, there's nothing elite about this right here. And also because I've known a lot of Alex Jones followers, a lot of people who really do believe, or maybe did and maybe don't now, I don't know, but people who have followed Alex Jones and InfoWars with a lot of detail, and they believed it, and these people aren't all just a bunch of dumb fools. Uh, some of them are, are college students, very smart college students, one of which, I, an honors student that I know, he's an intelligent guy. But he was taken, the way I see it, he was taken by Alex Jones and how compelling his information really was. And I think that's really what it gets to. Not so much that, ooh, you people are stupid for listening to him, but it's dangerous when you have somebody that's that compelling with what isn't information, but they're peddling it as such. And that problem with the fact that he's been so compelling is that he fooled you. He's fooled people. And now he's forced to admit that he's just been peddling nonsense, in a way. Okay, so if you're quick to defend his content, saying that he's just saying this under duress, well, then he's perjuring himself by saying these aren't his actual beliefs. However, if they are his beliefs, and he feels like he must represent that they're not, that still says something. Because if he's forced to say that these feelings aren't really his feelings, because he, he's worried that they come off as antisocial, or problematic, or damaging in some way, well then, if it looks like a duck and smells like a duck, right? These are problematic statements. However, if he does really believe them in them, should he not stand by them? And either way, was he lying when he said them and represented them to you, to the public, as being something that is we really need to be worried about and that he's peddling the truth and everybody else is lying? Or if he's telling the truth now about he was lying then, well then he's basically sold you all a bad bill of goods. However, if he really did believe that, but this is just kind of like, oh, well, I'm just saying this to get one over on the court system, then he's perjuring himself. He's lying. He either lied then or he's lying now. At any rate, somewhere along this timeline, he's still admitting that his rhetoric is antisocial and bad and damaging. 
he's disavowed his own views. Full stop. Period. And then there's Bill O. Oh, Bill O. You know, Bill O'Reilly. For years, Bill O, you've been Bill O-ing about the right way to be and touting yourself as a culture warrior and lecturing America. You've been lecturing African Americans about how black culture is ruining society. You've been lecturing about how liberals are ruining America. You've been talking about how feminists are ruining America. And if they want affordable birth control, they should just hold an aspirin between their knees. You know, that whole thing. At any rate, you've been lecturing America and touting yourself as this great culture warrior. And now, you have lost your job because you've become a liability to Fox News. Which is the brand that you built so you become a liability to your own brand? Interesting how that happens. So what's it all about? Saying that, you know, these two individuals, are they showing hypocrisy? Are they displaying hypocrisy? Yes. But is it just that simple as to go to name calling and saying, oh, well, you're a hypocrite and write you off? This is part of the human condition. And it's something that more elegantly is referred to as cognitive dissonance. And a simple Google search for cognitive dissonance yields the following. A state of having inconsistent thoughts, beliefs, or attitudes, especially as relating to behavioral decisions and attitude change. Okay, so inconsistent thoughts or beliefs. You know, like telling people how moral and just that they should be, but then maybe acting in a way that isn't so great and ends up getting you fired. Or telling people what the truth really is, but then the whole time it's just been kind of a Carnival Barker show to turn a pretty lucrative buck. Okay, so to say that this is only done on the right or only done by conservatives is completely false and would just be terrible to say, frankly. I, to be honest, it's something, it's a part of the human condition. It's something that we all do. Everybody has their moments of cognitive dissonance where you know, you think and feel one thing in one moment, and then maybe it's inconsistent from you, the very same person, in another moment in some way. For instance, you're in traffic, and you just rage out on somebody, and you go, Oh, I'm gonna fucking kill you! And then you end up parking right next to that person, and they get out of their car, and it's Terry Crews! But, you know, we all have those moments where... We think we're on a, on the line with something, and we're totally sold off on something, and then later on, maybe we're just, oh, no, I was just kidding. How many of us did this as kids? Ask my sister. Our whole childhood was just a bunch of cognitive dissonance of me not wanting to get in trouble for, I don't know, stupid shit that I did as a terrible older brother. But it, So, again, it's one of those things that everybody does. However, it is something that's very dangerous. I found a quote from Martin Luther King that kind of touches on this. Nothing in the world is more dangerous than sincere ignorance and conscious stupidity. And really, that made me think, or it takes me back to the whole thing about Alex Jones and consciously putting out one thing even though it's really not something that you want to represent later on. You're realizing, well, I went down a, a terrible rabbit hole and got a lot of support and made a lot of money off the things that I said. But now I'm losing my kids, and wow, I really took that bus too far. And the other thing that kills me about cognitive dissonance, not just about how dangerous it is, but folks, we live in the information age. The information age. This is where we're at. That the, the touch of a, a phone, just boom, at the point of a finger. We have access to all of the information in the world, all of the great thinkers, all of the great studies. You can go and find basically anything from a Harvard class and have access to all of that learning for free. Yeah, you don't get the credit for it, so you can't get a degree, but you can still learn just as much. This is the age that we live in. So the fact that we've allowed ourselves to get derailed on bad information, I mean, at this point, if we are in the information age, we should be taking that information and using it to build a greater, better, more enlightened society, should we not? I sure think we should, but I just feel that we have settled. We've settled bigly. You gotta believe me. So, I guess at this point, I'm just at, at something of a loss. So, I'm gonna turn it over to you folks. Let's get this conversation going. How can we fight cognitive dissonance? Leave comments in the comments section. Let's get a real conversation going. You know, I mean, maybe we can actually start to advance the conversation to something better than just, oh, your side's lying and your side's is false news and all that kind of stuff. So, throw me some stuff in the comments. But, 
Now you're probably wondering, wait a minute, are you getting ready to wrap this thing up? You said something about God having a dick? Yes, I did. So this is where this all comes from. So along the lines of me seeing the news report about Bill O'Reilly getting fired and being reminded about that other crazy lunatic, there's also been other conversations that I've had with coworkers and friends and family and such, one of which being very much about what information is true. You know, the age-old argument of creationism versus evolution, right? Which info set is true? Is creation a bunch of lies? Is creationism a bunch of lies? Or is evolution fake news? There are two things that kind of fly in each other's face. So what does God's penis have to do with the argument of evolution versus creationism? I mean, why does God's penis matter? First off, God's penis does matter. All penises matter. Another funny one. So what does that have to do with God having a penis? Very simply, a lot of people that believe in creationism believe so because they take the word in the Bible at complete literal face value. However, some of those words happen to be that we were created in God's image. So if we were created in God's image, and the image of a man is that of having a penis, does that mean that God has one too? Why is this guy talking about God's penis so much? Why would an omnipotent omnipresent, omniquantal, that's a word I made up, all time, right? No beginning, no end. Why would that being need five fingers to grasp and hold, um, and opposable thumbs to grasp and hold, and a penis for sexual procreation and for discharging of urine after he's eaten and drank? But I don't think God needs any of that. So. This might be one of those cognitive dissonant moments, maybe, and I've noticed it during a conversation with a coworker about this very topic. I feel like the definition of created in his image is being something very literal. However, when asked about this, I was told, well, it's figurative in his image. Yeah, roughly. Maybe God has a penis, maybe God doesn't have a penis, we don't know. But if we're being, now we're being figurative with the words, but just a moment ago, you were representing that we have to be literal with the words, that we were created in his image, but yet in his image is being fig So it doesn't jibe, it doesn't connect. It seems to me to be a moment of cognitive dissonance. So that's where God's penis has to do with this whole thing. Again, I'll just ask you all, what can we do to better combat cognitive dissonance? Leave me a comment in the comments section, Say whatever you want, make fun of my hair, I don't care. But, you know, and if you feel like this is something that's a noteworthy conversation, share it with your friends, and, you know, maybe we'll get the conversation actually moving forward, because that's what we need to do. We need to move these conversations forward. we got to stop just name-calling and saying liars and fake news when we can really build a good conversation, because we're good people. We're living in the information age, folks. Let's start to do more better, huh? All right, that's all I got. <laughs> <laughs> so does God have a penis? Does God have a penis? Does God have a cock? God's cock, God's dong, dong, da dong, dong, dong. <laughs> <laughs> I just felt like that had to go in there. <laughs> Not in. No, oh, Jesus.